uh, unbelief. I ask you a question. I say, do you have faith? Are you still trusting and believing God? Are you still standing in the word of God? And, and, I, and I said, that this is the time that we really need to spend time filling, filling ourselves with faith and, and really trusting God to, to be a blessing to us. And, and, uh, and we need to be a blessing to him because we need to keep our focus and our mind on him. I, and then I said to you, it's a lot of movement going on. But don't, don't be so quick to move. You know, keep yourself covered up. Uh, and, but first and most of all, the, the best protection I believe we can have is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Stay encouraged. Don't allow man to influence you if God is saying something different. Stay with God. Stay with God and put yourself in a position where we can hear the voice of God, where we can hear the voice of God. Uh, it's important that now we hear the voice of God. Now, how does God speak? God speaks through his word, of course. And then God also speaks in, in our soul, inside of our spirit. God speaks. We can hear God in we can, we can We can hear God, and he speaks through, through ministers. He speaks through, he can speak through a babe. But you need to be able to have the spirit of discernment, and we need to have the spirit of discernment where we know that it's God. So don't be in hurry to, to move so quick and, and do things that everybody's doing. Just make sure that you, you take care of yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. And don't be intimidated when folk say different things to you and, and try and challenge you. But one thing I was, I, I did say that I, was, I cursed uh, domestic violence. I cursed suicide. I cursed loneliness. A lot of times people get so lonely. And, uh, and God was revealing some things to me uh, as, as I was preparing to come this evening. And, 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 and it's easy to, you know, you, don't, you can be in the home with people and still not be communicating, not loving each other, not interacting. But it's critical, brothers and sisters, that you take this time and really fall in love with God great and allow God to have his way and allow God to do what he, what he desires to do. Um, so, so that's where we are. I haven't had a chance to pray yet. We, we're just getting going, so it's a good time. I, um, but I do have a word. I believe God has given me a word. As we look at our lives, a lot of times we have the opportunity to look back over. There, there are a lot of things that we, if we could change, I believe we would change. If we could do different, if we could do better, I think we would. So I believe God has given me a word for us to change with his doing better and doing different. Um, this, is, this is what God has given me. The Holy Spirit is our power for change. The Holy Spirit is our power for for change. Get that. Because, because no matter what changes you see needing to be done, the Holy Spirit is our power. Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. It's the Father, God, it's the Son, it's the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit is our power for change. Do you know the Holy Spirit has always been around? He's always been around. Before we pray, I want to go in the book of Genesis. I want to show you something. And I'm going to go into Genesis. I'm going to go in Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read the first couple of verses in Genesis, maybe three verses. It says this, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now get this. And the earth was without form. Like a lot of our lives when we began, we, we, didn't, we didn't know what we're doing, which, which way to go. And some of us are still there. Void. Void means it's empty of meaning and purpose. And, and darkness, was, darkness was upon the face of the, of, of the deep. That means that, you know, that there are places where you just, you seem you feel like you're so lost, you don't know which way to go. But, but in the beginning, so this, my purpose for giving you this is to let you know that the Holy Spirit has always been around doing the same thing, bringing into existence whatever God said to bring into existence. So I'm going to read it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the spirit, the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, he moved upon the earth, upon the face of the waters. In other words, he got in a position where he could bring into existence the plans of God. That's what he's done in our lives. To those of you, uh, uh, those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of our life, we have the Holy Spirit and he's on the inside of us, but he's on the inside of us with an assignment to teach us the ways of God, the word of God, to empower us to live out the life that God has ordained for us to live if we so choose to yield to him. I want to pray, and then I want to get into the message that God has given me. Heavenly Father, right now we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we just humble ourselves. We love you. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. 
Oh, Father God, we lift up all, oh, glory to God, oh, glory to God, somebody need prayer today. We lift up every situation and all circumstances because we know, Father, there is nothing, nothing too hard for you. We know that. We know, Father God, that you glory to God. We know that you fill the heavens and we know you fill the earth. And we bless your holy name. We glorify, we worship, oh, glory to God. We worship you right now. We praise you. We magnify you, God. Even in the midst of all of this that is going on, Father God, we lift you up. You said if Jesus be lifted up, you'll, be, you'll draw all men unto him. Father God, right now, we, we lift up our, our country, this nation. We lift up the world because we need to work together now, God. We need your help. We need your master to help us. We lift up this president of the United States of America, Father God. And we, oh, Lord, please touch him. Help him, God, to, to do you, not himself. And, and Father God, he's there. He's in the office. We're, we're praying for that office. Now, Father God, we're asking that you move. And if you're already moving, God, we give you the honor and we give you the glory. We ask that you move in the midst of these circumstances. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. We ask that you break these strongholds. We ask that you destroy the work of the enemy, God. We ask that you stop this virus in the name of Jesus. We lift up the Congress, Father God. We, we rebuke all of that discord and that fighting, Father God. And we're asking that you will, you will rule in our favor. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. We ask that you will rule in our favor. That you will bless us even now, God. We're trusting you to bless those. That we are in need of you, God. People are suffering. They're going through. They're having all oh, glory. That God, thank you, Jesus. They're having challenging times. Oh, but you are the answer, Master. And I know that you sit and you know all about it. And it's a perfect time to draw us closer to you. And I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, what you are doing now, let it, let it last. Let us get close to you and let it change our environments. Let it change our minds. Let it change our hearts. Let it change our families. Let it change the dynamics of our lives because we're getting closer to you. And Father God, allow it to be habitual. Let us not forget, Father God, when this is all said and done. Let us not forget that you took care of us. Let us not forget that you made a way for us, Father God. Let us remember who will grow that God. And Father God, let us give you glory. Those that were ashamed of you before me, call on your name now. Don't let them go back in the closet, Father. But let them give you glory. Hallelujah. Let them give you glory, Father, for what you've done. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just give you the honor and we give you the glory. We give you the praise for the victory. Oh, Father God, we thank you for healing right now. We thank you for moving by your spirit, supernatural glory that God, you are the God that heals us. Bless your holy name. You said by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Bless God. Hallelujah. Father God, we claim it. We stand in it in the name of Jesus. We will live it. Oh, glory. We will live and not die. Decree it upon your lives, brothers and sisters. You will live and not die in the name of Jesus. Father, we just bless you. We glorify, we worship you now, Father God. I submit myself to you. I ask that you have your way. Oh, yeah, have your way, Master. Just to use me. I know you've got a word for this season or for this day. And, Father God, I'm asking now that it will come through me by your Holy Spirit. Bless you, God. I worship, I praise you. Let it come, let it come, let it come in the name of Jesus, Father. And I just yield, I surrender. Let it be you and let it not be me. And, Father God, I give you the honor, the glory, and I give you the praise for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me give you this. Now, I'm going to say this again. There are times when we look at our lives and we wish things could be better and different. A lot of times we just sit back and we, we, have, we have an opportunity and we look at our lives and, and, we, and we look at some of the things that, 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 are, that have happened or things that are going on and we wish they would be different. We wish it could make a difference. These thoughts lead us to seek answers and solutions to make things better. We do it again. When there are times when we look at our lives and we wish things could be better and different. These things lead us to seek answers and solutions to make things better and different. They, can, they cannot be better and don't be different. They're going to be different. They can't. It's stuff that just will never. If you want it to be better, you're going to have to let it. You're going to have to let go of some stuff, and things will have to change. Jabez was. He's, he's over in the Old Testament, and, and, and Jabez was a. Was it was it was one of the one of the Jew was it, part of the Judah tribe? He was one who looked at his life and his circumstances with a desire for his life to be different and better. So he reached out to God, as we all must do for real change. It's the same way Jabez reached out to God because he looked at his life and he said, "You know, I, I know my life don't have to be this way. I want you to. I want to go into First Chronicles chapter four so we can look at exactly what Jabez is talking about." Let's look at verses 9 and 10. Uh, 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 first, first Chronicles, First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. 
I want you to look at this. I think it's important. And Jabez was, was more honorable than his brothers. And of course, you know, Chronicles deal with the chronological order all the way up to, it's going to bring us all the way up to Christ when we go into the book of Matthew. You'll find that he picks up what, Chron what Chronicles left off. But it's, it's dealing with the, you know, the, the, all, the, all, the, all the tribes of Israel and it's, it's following them. So, so, so Jabez was one, but he was honorable, the scripture says. He was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez. Now saying, because I bear him with sorrow, with sorrow, with sorrow. His mother called his name Jabez. Now the word sorrow is a very powerful word. The, the word sorrow is distress or pain. His mother stated, I gave him, I gave birth to him in pain. And, and, and so it, it, it affected Jabez's life. It, it affected how he acted, affected how he interacted with people. And, and, and names matter, but, but, but she was in sorrow. The word, the word sorrow is, is also to be distressed or to have distress or to be under stress consistently. And it's caused by loss. To have distress, that's, you can look at your life sometimes, you can be like, man, if I had made that decision, then that could have happened. If I had made that decision, then that could have happened. If I had done this, that could have happened. And you look at it and it begins to accumulate. And it begins. So, so, so sorrow is, is distress caused by loss. Our affliction. Sometimes life can be so devastating, so challenging, and so difficult that you can have afflictions. Different things can happen to you, and you can you can be afflicted. Also, disappointments. Disappointments. Like you know, things don't go like I thought. I planned. I I, I did everything that was necessary. I educated myself. I prepared myself. I you know I, I thought everything would go different. But sometimes life doesn't go like we think it should go. That can be very disappointing. It can be very disappointing. Grief. Sadness and regret, a cause or occasion of grief and regret. And regret. So, so here, here it is. Here's Jabez. Now he's born in this. A lot of us have been born, you know. Maybe you know we don't really know the condition of our parents when, when we were born, but we but it but it affects our lives. It it, it it takes a toll on our lives, and and sometimes we can get it fixed. Sometimes we can't because. We, we are angry or either we're bitter or we're blaming our parents. You know, when we, when we wasn't afforded some of the opportunities and we look at other children, it seems like they're afforded opportunities that we were not afforded. It's easy to sort of try to find the, the reason, but then you have to go farther than what you find. You have to look at what was my parents' condition? You know, what did they go through? What were their challenges? Why is it, you know, and then that brings about a compassion and a mercy and a grace that allows you to get out of where you are. Because you got to remember, and you got to be conscious of this, nobody really wants to do bad unless they are trained to do bad, unless they are taught to do bad. Nobody wants to be miserable. Nobody wants to be hurt. Nobody wants to miss opportunities unless, unless they are breeded that way, unless they are brought up that way. You know, and so when you begin to come up out of that thought, out of, you know, this is not, I don't have to live like this, this is not, you start looking for answers. You start trying to find what the key to that is. Don't be, don't hate your mother, don't hate your father, don't hate your uncle, don't hate your granddaddy, don't hate your cousins. No matter what happened, you all are a clan. A family is a clan. And, and, and then if you are the one that God wants to use to break out and to, and to bring, make something different happen, then you are the one. But you, you will, it, will ne you, you, it will never happen if you are angry and bitter at those who could not do any better. You can look back and you say, well, they could have done better. In actuality, they couldn't because... Whatever tools they had, they were using them. We all use the tools we have until we change tools. That's why I say things have to be different in order to be better. So, so, so let me go back to verse 9. I want to show you this. I'm going to go to verse 10 over in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. It says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Sorrow. Jabez was conscious of this. So look at verse 10 with me. And Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Get that. If God bless you, he empower you to overcome all the things that shut you down, all the obstacles in your life, you know, all the all the predictions and all the negativity and all the words that were spoken over you before you were born. That's having an effect now in your life. And you don't know why it is that you can't stop this. You don't even know why it is that you're that way. You don't want to be that way, but it but it, it came from somewhere. Somebody said something. Somebody acted away. And, and it came, it, it, it literally has come. See, Satan moves. The, 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 Satan is not, a, he's not, he's not omnipresent. He, he's not omniscient. He, he's not omnipotent. 
He's none of that. He's not everywhere at all times. But, but what happens is this, the spirit of the world, the spirit of Satan is disobedience. So he moves generationally within the, within the, within the rights of the bloodline, but his activities has already been started way back. It's like a person don't have to have sugar diabetes, but what happens is it's bad eating habits. We don't have to have high blood pressure, but it's bad eating habits. You know, you don't really have, but it's already in the clan, so it's anticipated, and people start just, we start gravitating to who we are based on the clan we come from. But what, what we're doing tonight is we're, we're looking at the change that God desired to make, the difference that God desired, the, the bringing us out of that, to, the deliverance, the power. All of that's invested in the Holy Spirit inside of us. So this is the prayer of Jabez in verse 10. It says, and Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. Get that in your arsenal. Ask God to bless you. To bless, bless you means that God knows what that means. He can bring you out some stuff. And then he goes and he says, and enlarge my coast, or enlarge my territory. In other words, he said, when you bless me, God, I'm asking you to increase me, to give me what I need. He said, enlarge my territory, to give me a wider perspective, a, a, a deeper hope, a, a greater hope, a, a greater anticipation of life. And, uh, and that your hand, he's asking God, he says, that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from evil. Get that now. So he asked God for some things. He said, he said bless me. Somebody need to say that glory that God, you need to say, God, bless me now. You need to say, God, enlarge me. God has been enlarging me, brothers and sisters. We've been standing on this word amazing, tremendous, unprecedented. Oh, glory that God, thank you, Jesus, prosperity. But he's been, see, God can, he don't care nothing about this, this, COVID-19, he don't care about no, God will bless you in the midst of all of this, brothers, if you, brothers, if you can put your mind on him. So this is what he said to him. He said, I want you to, I need you to bless me indeed. He said, enlarge me. Enlarge, enlarge me means to get me out of this narrow piece because he was born in sorrow, so it's just so negative, it's so heavy, it's so, his mind is, is, is really locked into this, what he was born, born into, this dysfunction and this lack and this, this locked in, ceiling limitation life. But he's asking God to, God to enlarge me. Let me see life from a different perspective. Help me, God. Bless me. And so he's asking God to enlarge me. So he asked God to bless me. Bless him is to empower him to, to prosper. Empower me, God. Empower me. Empower me to, 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 to prosper inside of my soul. When you prosper, brothers and sisters, inside of your soul by seeking God and loving God and having a desire for God, everything, life begins to just come to you. And then he says, enlarge my coach. He said, and he said, and and, and that thine hand might be with me. He said, don't leave me. He said, because as you bless me, this is something we need to realize, brothers and sisters. When God is bringing us out, when he's making changes in our lives, we still need God. Life will get so good, and you'll start celebrating, you forget. Don't you forget that God did it. <laughs> give God, hey, give God the glory for, good, for doing it. Give him the glory. Praise him for doing it. Bless him for doing it. Bless him for doing it. Him, so he, said, he said, don't take your hands off me. In other words, he said, I want to stay with you, God. He said, keep me. He said, keep me. He said, I don't ever want to go back to this. I don't want to ever be right here again. I want you to just take my life, and I want you to do something with it now, Master. He said, and you will keep me from evil. Evil is disrespect and dishonoring God. That's absolute evil. Evil is, is, is just, you know, we all do some evil. We all are, are, are capable of doing something that's absolutely out of character for the believer. But but it, but he said this is what he said. He said keep me from evil. And so 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 when you what he's saying is if you help me on the inside, I'm not projecting evil on myself. A lot of times people don't realize. A lot of times you don't realize that things are coming into your life because of how you're thinking, what you're anticipating, what you what you are what you are receiving. You know, some things you shouldn't receive. You need to watch what people say about you. You need to look at their words. You need to focus in on what they're saying. And you need to we need to not receive it. Don't, there's some things that, that people say, you, you don't have to argue with them. You don't have to fight with them. You just have to say, I uproot that, I rebuke that, I don't receive that, not over my life, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, it's, and, 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 and sometimes our flesh will get us in a moment where, where we're not really paying attention because we love the person, we trust the person, or we got good with it. No, no, no. Trust God and love me. So he says, he says, he says bless me. He says, enlarge my, my coast. And, um, and, 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 and keep your hand, your, and, 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 and that thine hand might be with me, and that you keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. When, when, you, when God began to move you forward in life, it hurts bad when you, when you sort of get out of sync with it, when things sort of get in a bad place because you, 
because something you did or somewhere you compromised, it, it really, really puts you in a bad place. And so when he's asking God, he said, God, please help me to stand in these places. He's saying, Grant, and God, look at this now, get this part, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And God granted him that which he requested, that which he requested. God granted him that which he re requested. As I said in the beginning, there are times when we look at our lives and, and wish things would go better and, and, and different. These thoughts lead us to seek answers and solutions uh, for things to get better. Regardless to our imperfections and our shortcomings, get this, the Holy Spirit is able to help us become better and greater in word and in deed. I'll do it again. Regardless to our imperfections and our shortcomings, the Holy Spirit who indwells us is able to help us become better and greater in word and in deed. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, or those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. He, he lives inside of us as Lord, to help us to be all the better. All the better. I want to go to John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. It says this, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, things of God. Teach us how to be children of God. Whatever we learn in Scripture, and we need the Holy Spirit to bring it back. To, and so, so what he's saying is, he said, he'll teach you. Because we need to learn, brother. We have to have a spirit, a heart of learning when we're talking about doing better, when we're expecting change, when we think different. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't even learn in school because you know it all. The teachers give you one point, and they got a deeper, deeper revelation of it. You know it, so you just take off with it. You have to stop your mind from doing that. Because when, what you don't know, you don't know, and what you don't know can hurt you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What you know can help, but you have, we have to be, we always have to be students. We have to always be hearing and listening. We always have to have a willingness so the Holy Spirit will teach us from the inside of us. So, so, so then, then, then we must consistently yield to the Holy Spirit. We must consistently yield to the Holy Spirit to experience different and better. Galatians chapter five, go to Galatians chapter five with me. Chapter five. Verses 16 through 17. I want you to go there. I want, to, I want you to have this. I want you to have this. I want to show you something here to back this up. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Now, now verse, 15, verse 16 says this. It says this. But I say, walk. I'm in the amplifying. I'm in the amplifying. I'm in the amplifying. I'm, I'm going in there because I, I believe that. And you remember I tell you the amplifying, it's got a lot of paraphrasing. But trust the Holy Spirit to give you the in-depth revelation that you need. Trust, trust God to give you what you need out of this because this is very powerful. I chose the Amplifier because I felt like it would it, it, it will help us to get the understanding of the Holy Spirit and yielding to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it says, but I say walk habitually, make it a habit, make it a habit in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, by the instructions, yield, keep, keep saying to the Holy Spirit, I yield to you. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I, yield, I submit myself to you. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Be responsive. Sometimes we, we, we get a little, you know, headstrong and we want to go in another direction. But that's all growing and developing in the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is the one that can take you into the new life. He can take you into a better life. He can take you into a different life. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature. Now, we do have a sinful nature, which is the flesh. And it will always desire against the will of God. When you won't change, remember, your, your flesh, it'll be a battle, like real battle, real battle. What you want to do is you want to keep talking to the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit, I got these desires. I'm doing these things, but I'm still trusting you to help me. I need you to help me. You, and he'll empower you. This will bless you. This is, God didn't make it hard. He made it easy. But you, you have, we have to be willing to learn. And sometimes some stuff, you, you, you're under the law. People put you under the law. You got to do this and you got to do it. They can't do it. You know, it's nobody in the earth that can live so perfect. Nobody. What we can do, we can trust the Holy Spirit to change the dynamics of our lives and our thinking patterns and the way we interact by having conversation and continuously yielding, continuously trusting him. Because, and don't let other people tell you, well, you know, you, you're supposed to be saved. You should, well, you know, really and truly, they are not as saved as they say they are. They got to put you through all that. So here it is. It says, um, it says I'm going back to verse 16. It says, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of this information. So if you want to change, you've got to trust the Holy Spirit. 
You got to trust. You got to. You got to be responsive to His guidance, and then you won't carry out. There's no other way. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can get you out of that nature that you don't that you don't really want to be in anymore. Now let me let me do it again. So you you you, you will not. You certainly will not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and His precepts. The flesh does. It responds. It, it, it responds to life. But it doesn't respect God. It doesn't regard God. It doesn't have it, 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 him and his it, it, it leaves the word of God out. Verse 17 says this, and it's in the Amplified. For the sinful nature, which is the flesh, it has its desires, which is opposed to the spirit. So we got some parts of us that's going to go against the spirit of God. That's why we have to subject our flesh. We have to bring it under the Holy Spirit. For the sinful nature has its desires, which, which oppose the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. So there's a battle that's continuously going on. But for these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, the Holy Spirit, are in direct opposition. This is the challenge you have. That's why you, you go, some days you have great days. Sometimes I mean, we're talking about change. Sometimes you fail, you completely drop the ball. It's just a horrible moment. But don't stay there. God already know about Don't beat yourself up. Let me get to that. Um, in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict, so that as believers, as believers, so that you do not always do whatever good things you want to do. Let's go over to let's, let's look at Paul and what he said about that. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. I want you to look at something here. Romans chapter 7. I'm going to look at verses 14 on down through. We, we really begin to see life uh, different. A totally different and, a, and take on a different perspective when, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and live by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to look at this, how that battle goes on. Look what Paul said over in Romans chapter 7. He said, we know, this is amplified, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am, I am a creature of the flesh, worldly, self-reliant, carnal, and unspiritual, sold into slavery, to sin, and serving under its control. For I do not understand my own actions, I am baffled and bewildered by them. I do not practice what I want to do, but I'm doing the very thing I hate doing and yielding to my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. Now, I, now if I habitually do what I do not want to do, that means I agree with the Lord confessing that it is good, morally excellent. So now if that is the case, it is no longer I who do it. Get that now. Paul said it ain't me who do it. He's, he, this disobedient thing which I despise, but the sin nature which lives in me. Get that in your spirit. For I know this is when change, you, you have to face some things, and you have to, because you're a stop. Like if you don't say, okay, if you, if you say, well, you know, I made so many mistakes, I know God don't want to have nothing to do with me, I'm just tired of Shut up. Stop, don't, don't do that. Don't even think yourself to do that. Stop. Stop it. No, you got to get some sense. Learn, learn this thing. You know? Get this all in your spirit. And then read this when I'm not, when I'm, when, once we finish. Verse 18 says, for I know that nothing good, nothing good lives in me, that is, in my flesh, my human nature, my willingness, my sinful capacity. For the willingness to do is present with me, but the doing of a good thing is not. For the good that I want to do, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But that's what Jabez was saying. He said, God, I need you to help. He said, but, I, but if I'm doing the very thing I do not want to do, I am no longer the one doing it. That is, it is not me. Uh, it is not me that acts, that acts, that, that, that do the, but sin by itself. So sin takes it, it has its own nature, which lives in me. So I find it to be the law of my inner self. That evil is present with me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully delight in the law of God in my inner self with my new nature. But I see, get this. But I see a different law and rule of action in, in my members, in the members of my body, in its appetites and desires, waging war. I tell you, it was a war against the law of my mind and subduing me and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is within my members. Get this now. This is, this is the part where he's going to set himself free. And this is, what we this is what Jabez was saying to God. Wretched and miserable man that I am, who will rescue me? And set me free from this body of death, this corrupt mortal existence. 
Thanks be to God for my deliverance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is the one that set us free. That's what Jabez was saying to God. God set me free. Jesus has come and he set us free. And then Jesus, when he went back to the Father, the Father said the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is designed to keep us moving. To keep us moving into a different and better life. So then, on the other hand, I myself with my mind serve the Lord God. But on the other hand, with, with my flesh, my human nature, my willingness, my sinful capacity, I serve the Lord Savior. Now, now get this. Get this in the spirit. I'm going to go to chapter 8. I'm going to read a few verses in chapter 8. Here is our solution to the better and different life. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 says this, therefore there is no condemnation. No condemnation. Again, I'm in the Amplifier. Watch what it says in the parenthesis. No guilty verdict. No punishment. Now, when you're in Christ, because that war goes on, once you accept Jesus Christ, you've done something. You, you, you've, you've, you've allowed God to come in and, and begin to destroy the work of the enemy and give you life again. A life that's worth living. A life that you can have. A life that you can recover and, and keep on going and keep on moving and, and life can get better. Let me, let me finish this now because I'm about finished for the night. It says, therefore, there is no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ. And this is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And then I'm doing the amplifying. And let me read that again. I like that. There, therefore, there is no condemnation. That's a very powerful word. Then you put in parentheses, no guilt, no verdict, no punishment. Now, when you receive that, you can keep on moving because, because what, the, what, the, what the flesh try to do, it, every time you do something, it try to make you feel like you can't recover. God don't love me no more. I'm just, no, the devil is a liar. God saved you when you were yet sinning. God saved you, saved us, but we didn't even know God. We didn't even know we need to be saved. So don't let the enemy trick your mind. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, of the spirit of life, which is the Holy Spirit in us, the law of, 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 of our new being has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, that is overcome sin and remove its penalties and, and its power. Get this now, this is what we're living in. Being weakened by the flesh, man's nature without the Holy Spirit. God did it. Get that. I don't want to rush that. Get that. God has listened to me, brothers and sisters. God has done everything, and he's doing everything we can't do in us. I know people get deep and say, well, you know, really, no, 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 you have to grow in this thing. You have to grow with the Holy Spirit, and you'll be transformed, and it's real. A lot of times we can get, get in church, and we can get peer pressure, and we can try to act out, and then we, we, get, we, we got a secret life. We got a closet life. No, no, no. You let God see your closet life and be real with God, and you can't let man listen to me. A lot of times people don't understand your growth, and what they'll do is they'll They'll make you feel like God don't want to have nothing to do with you because they don't want They forgot. We have a tendency, brothers and sisters, to forget how far God brought us. You know, so 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 you you have, this has to be personal. It has to be intimate. It has to be with God. I want to read some more, more verses. I'm going to start with verse 3 again. For the law could not do, that is, overcome sin and remove its penalties and its power, being weakened by the flesh, man's nature without the Holy Spirit. God did. He sent his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin, and he condemned sin in the flesh, subdued it, and overcame it in the person of his own son. So that the righteous, this is verse 4, and just requirements of the law might be fulfilled. Listen to me, listen to me, might be fulfilled in us, is fulfilled in us by the Holy Spirit. That's how you change. That's what your hope is. That's why you should never give up. That's why you should never surrender. That's why you should never give in. Verse 5 says this, for those who are living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are living according to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, they set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Amen. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you this. Jabez prayed a powerful prayer. And we have the right to pray the same prayer. I want you to, to, to consistently, no matter where you are, you can, you can feel like, you know, I got it together. Everything is going, no, no, somebody's suffering. Somebody you can help. If you got it so together, so let God help you in that area because you might be a little bit stingy. You might be a little bit selfish. You might not want to. You might just be me and mine. No, no, no. God has not blessed us in the kingdom of God to be me and mine. We have to be conscious. So everybody have an area. So you might, you might, be, you might have drugs. You might have a, have a drug problem. You might have sexual addiction. You might, you might have, it, might, it, could, be, it could be anything. 
But let me tell you something. God loves you. And he and he's done all of this to, to set you free and to set you free and to give you give you hope. But we have to we have to reach for God. We have to say, you know, God, I need you, especially right now. If 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 if, if you if this if you feeling God pulling at you right now and drawing you to his son, Jesus Christ, this is an opportune moment to really turn everything around. I don't care if you've been saved for a million years. You sometimes you still got to go back and crowd. You, you know, Jabez was in the family of God. He was, in the family. he was in the family of God when he cried out to God. Because even in the family of God, some things can hit your life and disrupt your life. He asked God to bless him. I want you to do the same, brothers and sisters, but this is how you're going to do it and how we do it is we first confess to God that God, you know, I've sinned against you. And if you want to do this with me, I, I want you to. If you need Jesus Christ, I'm going to lead you there. But you just, just speak it out loud. God, I've sinned against you. God, I want you to forgive me, please, Master. Forgive me for all of my sins and all of my trespasses. I need you, Father. Jesus Christ, I need you to be my Lord and I need you to be my Savior. You're my only way to the Father. You're my only way to a new life. You're my only way to the reception of the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. I'm yielded to you. I submit my life to you. I submit my life to you right now. Now, now, Jesus, I believe that I've asked you to come in. You come in. So with my mouth, I confess you are the Lord of my life. And Jesus, you are. I give you full control. I surrender. I submit every day. If I forget Jesus, please remind me because I'm surrendered. You are the Lord of my life from this day forth. Thank you for saving my soul. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, will you please baptize me in the Holy Spirit? I receive it now. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, brothers and sisters, when you do that, you really do need to get baptized, emerge. Get dipped under that water. That's that liquid grave that'll kill that old man. That old man will die there. And you'll get up in, in Christ. God requires it. He requires it. Then you need your good church home. You need to grow spiritually. You need to, you need to be accountable. Somebody need to know that you are there and they can pray for you. You're on their mind. You need your good pastor or good whatever you want to call them. But God shall give up, give your pastor after my own heart. He didn't name a lot of the other old names, other names. God forgive me, brothers and sisters, if you're preaching, you got all these different types. I love you. I bless you. I thank God for you. But anyway, so so we're believing God to, to, to bless you and, and to draw you close. Now, I want you to give. I want you to stay faithful in your giving, your commitment. We're going to be back in the sanctuary soon. Look like we got everything just about we need. Now it's coming. Uh, but I want you to give tonight. I want you to be obedient. This is the time that we do our offering. And I want you to give your tithes. I want you to give your offering. I want you to be obedient to God because this is a blessed season. I know a lot is going on out there, but also God is doing a lot. You don't want to miss it by being disobedient with your tithe and your offerings and your first fruit and your giving. Be, be obedient. And you can go. We, we should have it on, on, on where if you, if you, wherever you're viewing this. It should be up right now how you can give. It should be up right now how you can give. Let me, let me, let me find out something here, too. You can. You can do it by texting. You can, you can dial a number, 678-661-5332, 678-661-5332. And then you text the word give and you'll be able to give. Hey, I love you. I thank God for you. This is what I'm praying for you as I as as we as we end now. I, I pray over your offering. I ask God to bless you as you give, as you're faithful and you're committed. But I'm, I'm praying as well that God will keep you and that you'll be kept. <laughs> Amen. That you'll stay with him. Keep your mind. I'm decreeing in the name of Jesus. All the distractions are gone and your mind is on God. You're praying without ceasing. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. You are blessed. You're encouraged. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The peace that Christ said, I'll leave. He said, I'll give you my peace. That means nothing missing and nothing is lacking. Take your consciousness off all that fear in the name of Jesus. Be blessed and I'll see you again soon.